speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester Indian Media. Hi, I'm Dawn Zapelli with Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV, and you're watching Indie TV, and uh, I'm the Barefoot Host. Today we're talking with Celia Coots, who is uh, a member of now the disbanded uh, Republican National Convention Welcoming Committee, the RNC Welcoming Committee. Um, and we're going to be talking about St. Paul and what happened in occupied St. Paul, which is really what it felt like. I mean, $50 million of funding for one week of pretty much uh, controlling a demonstration that uh, really meant a lot of weapons, chemical warfare, tasers, riot police, um, and people were brutalized. And it's uh, really crazy what happened there. So we're going to try to unpackage it. There's so many details, and we only have a half hour. But thank you, Celia, for helping us try to do this. Thanks for letting me come in, Don. And uh, the big thing is, the why don't you talk about the RNC Welcoming Committee? Because now there's eight members of the RNC Welcoming Committee with these outrageous charges. So we want to hear about that and what's going on. But let's first talk about what the Welcoming Committee's role was in this lead up to the protests that were going to happen at the RNC. Sure. Um, well, the RNC Welcoming Committee has existed for at least two years. And I wasn't there at the beginning, but um, when the um, RNC decided to come to St. Paul, a group of folks got together and said, we have to do something. We live here. Um, this isn't OK. And started organizing the logistical body that became the Welcoming Committee to help provide housing, um, child care, food, um, medical support, legal support for um, uh, groups of folk coming from across the country, particularly the anarchist and anti-authoritarian crowd. But um, you know, it's not a card-carrying membership, so it was folks, open yeah. to all types of. Yeah, you we know. held weekly meetings every Sunday for um, two years, um, consensus-driven, and um, they were open to the public up until the end. Mm -hmm. I know that word anarchist. I'm an anarchist, and I know that like scares people. Like, oh, but I'm not scary. You know, there's like so many people. I'm not violent. I, you know, I don't throw urine or feces, and I don't break windows, <laughs> and I don't build bombs. And you know, I really believe in decentralization of power, which is the opposite of what we see in St. Paul. And I think there's such a misunderstanding yeah. of anarchism and anarchists, and everybody gets labeled. And is that what, where you think this whole? Um, you know, intense reaction came from, or is that just an excuse to use the power that's already developing, or was it specific to there's anarchists in St. Paul? Right. I, you know, I don't know. I think it's a question I'm, a, I'm asking myself, and a lot of folks are too. Um, but at least as it's unfolded in the last month or so, it's definitely become clear. Uh, the mainstream media has used anarchism as a way to identify a lot of what happened, a lot of the the violence or the 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 fear um, that was on the streets perpetuating from some anarchist um, idea. And I, I agree, like like you, um, I identify as anarchist. And uh, most of the anarchist projects that I know um, are mutual aid, are providing for their communities, are, are supporting each other. Um, I know there's a Food Not Bombs here, and we talked about critical mass, and other, other things that um, really are, are self-governing um, options for people to engage in and, and not majority rules but consensus driven and so you know I'm not sure what's going on here uh, um, there's been a lot of conversations that this is the new black scare that's it's mm -hmm. the f you know going off the McCarthyism that what we've got here is a little bit of um, is scapegoating mm -hmm. and is is really targeting one political ideology, mm -hmm. a political ideology that believes in self-governance, mm -hmm. that believes that we are better off providing for each other than empowering some um, central 
body of power to, to govern us. And that's what it felt like because it really was a criminalization of dissent, of just right. being, you know, standing up for <clears> something <throat> and creating these other projects like you've talked about, how we can um, reclaim our communal power and do things for each other and work together and like what we're kind of developing, but also to be against the system. I mean, this whole Bush administration, this, um, you know, neoliberal, like the grab and take all and, you know, just the, the war machine that's going on right now, there's a lot to resist. So if right. people are talking about direct action mm -hmm. and civil disobedience, that's the history of what makes like that. Those are the exciting parts of this country that make it like really wonderful that mm -hmm. we did that and we like stood up at these moments to like, you know, know, fight the power that wasn't going to, like, give us time, break times, or, you know, keep us working, or low wages, and, you know, develop unions, and these kind of things. So why are they cracking down before we can even do that now? Like, the idea is to resist, and they're attacking the ideas before there's even any action. That's yeah. what it seemed like happened in yeah, St. Paul. I agree. Things didn't happen, and people were arrested, and people were raided, and homes were raided. Yeah. And nothing Four can home, happen. Uh, the convergence space, which is something the welcoming committee worked really hard at trying to provide, was a place for people to have these conversations about how do I want to best represent how I feel about the country and the streets. You know, how can I manifest um, a vision for myself here in St. Paul or in the Twin Cities in Minneapolis during the time of the RNC with a community of people from across the country who share my desire for mutual aid, for self-representation, things like that. Um, and you know, like I, civil disobedience is a long-standing tradition in this country. It's something I'm proud of. It's what has always brought about change, and and goodness knows that we are better off now than we were, um, you know, 50, 60 years ago with some of the rights uh, that we have now. So, um, what were some of those things? Like, just quick, some of the talk anyway. That maybe most of it didn't materialize. Maybe there was a few things we can talk about those to highlight. Uh, some of the direct actions that were successful there, but what were some of the things people want to do that never even happened, like how that would have looked? Well, honestly, I don't know. You know, the welcoming committee was always committed to logistical stuff, was committed to providing food, was committed to providing child care, to, to very, the basic needs, mm -hmm. the, you know, um, providing that sort of stuff. We were never facilitators of, um, of action. And so tell me about the raid, what happened that night. Let's well, there were a couple of raids, um, more mm -hmm. than one for sure, but the first one being at the Convergence Space. Fortunately, I wasn't there, but from all accounts, um, the, you know, what ha we were having events every, every evening. There was, um, like, speakers would come, or, like, and that evening in particular, they were going to show a film, a couple of films. And every evening at 7 p.m., Food Not Bombs would serve food. Um, and so dinner had just finished, and folks who were headed upstairs were actually starting the movie. And from what I've heard, friends have told me, um, and I've seen the video, police come in, um, you know, guns drawn. Kids were there. People were um, forced on the floor verbally and physically um, and, and detained um, for quite a while. So basically it's a community center. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, you know, uh, busted into with guns drawn for by the police with all kinds of members in the community. And uh, people, from what I know, they weren't really arrested, but they were ID'd and their pictures were yeah. taken. So yeah. now there's also who knows what kind of files on anybody that right. shows up to a public community event yeah. now has just for showing up to an event for a movie and a dinner right. somehow got, got tracked. It's very yeah. like quintessential pro but like not it even is. covert anymore it's no. like just we have do this yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there's no there's no even you want covers. community you gotta yeah gotta be consequences <laughs> you have to go underground for community yeah. now <laughs> you can't even have dinner together watch a movie because right. there's such a threat um, and that was crazy. We got into town, so we went to cover indie media. Several folks of us and other activists from town here went to St. Paul, and the first night we got there was the night of the raid, so we mm -hmm. got in right after all that, and we were woken up. We got in very late from Denver covering mm -hmm. that, which wasn't much better. I mean, the force was there. It just was a difference between a show of force, and in St. Paul, there was just the use of force was right. a lot more prevalent. Uh -huh. And. Uh, and we woke up after four hours of sleep to this house is getting raided and it was literally the yeah. first day of my experience in St. Paul was going from five raids including the bus that was taken, mm -hmm. the, the, the Permi bus, bus yep. that was taken and people left on the side of the road. We're going to have to tell these stories. I mean, there's so <laughs> many raids to talk about and there's so much that we can't even, you know, raids and brutality by the police and torture in the jails. I mean, yeah. it's really sickening what happened out there and people need to know and we're going to come back. You're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV and we're talking with 
Celia Coots, who's now become a me media liaison for the RNC Welcoming Committee. So stay tuned and check out rochester.indymedia.org. Uh, first, they just went after people didn't pay much attention because they captured people who are Muslim abroad and put them in detention camps here and overseas, and it didn't get much attention. It didn't get much attention when thousands of immigrants were placed in detention indefinitely. Um, the warnings of civil liberties people was worth, you know, eventually it's going to come home. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the state of Minnesota, in this case, Ramsey County specifically, taking the lead in, in the most manipulative, cynical, demagogic, and abusive fashion, or using the buzzword of terrorism to persecute people for political dissent, for having unconventional views. All they do is they label people as terrorists and anarchists. And at that point, what people are actually saying and the content of their views has no meaning anymore. What they do is they dehumanize people, they stigmatize them, and in the process, cut off what they're saying. And in this point, not only by marginalizing people and not paying attention to them, but actually using the criminal justice system as a severe bludgeon to cut off people in their efforts to be politically involved. That was just raided. Um, me and my partner were sleeping and I was naked and officers came and separated us and made me lie on the floor naked for about an hour. Um, and uh, then they proceeded to search and videograph everything that was there. They videotaped everything and then like they took pictures of everything and now they're going through it with a camera and filming everything after taking multiple pictures. Like they took like four pictures of the fr inside of the refrigerator, for example. Um, what, they, what were they saying? Hey, Dawn, the Barefoot host with Rochester Indie TV. We're talking to Celia Kutz from the RNC Welcoming Committee, and we're talking about St. Popo. I don't know if you've heard of St. Popo, but <laughs> I, oh. that's how I think of it now. I only think of St. Popo. I wish I had better feelings about St. Paul. I like Minneapolis. I'm not a fan of St. Paul, and I think it was ruined from all those riot police. Um, yeah. But at the break, we just had started talking about some of the raids. Do you want to talk about what that climate was, like the chilling effect yeah, that led sure. up to the demonstration and what that was about and how that went down? It wasn't just that day that they were able to get warrants. So there must right. have been some kind of tracking for some time yeah. into these groups and organizations. Yeah, well, I mean, for me, I'll just back up a look. Like, so I fell asleep to knowing that the convergence space had been raided and was awoken by a phone call at something like 7 in the morning that was like, four houses have been raided. And four of the people who I've been working with, the friends um, in my community. I mean, like my friend Monica, who's now er, uh, has been arrested and is being charged, lives around the corner um, from me. And so <laughs> my immediate was like, get the hell out of here. And um, I hit the road um, for a little bit, not leaving the city, but trying to stay um, mobile and, and a little bit um, out of sight. Mm -hmm. And I know two other friends of mine in the welcoming committee sought sanctuary at um, the uh, Quaker meeting house because there was a serious climate of fear. Mm -hmm. um, that's a horrible and feeling. It's a and horrible that's like, feeling. That's what that's what immigrants <laughs> in this country. That's really the so whole. So many other people besides. I mean, I am privileged by my skin and by um, my class, and and you know, in a lot of ways, it's like uh, unfortunate to hear how many um, horrible experience people had a St. Paul, but really a teaching moment or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, silver lining that's out mm -hmm. there is that two things one people got really educated on what the hell it means to be in this country and not be privileged and to be a threat to this country and that can that threat can take many forms depending on how the state determines that threat mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is that we are stronger as a community um, and so there were four raids that morning um, and then we, so we called a huge community And when you meeting. say raid, let, let's sure. just set up the raid, what yeah. it looks like, because it's crazy. I mean, I went from house to house to food net bombs to people's residence, right. and it is, it looks like a murder scene. I mean, yeah. they have the yellow tape around the house. They had at least two law enforcement jurisdictions, uh, I think, from Ramsey, Ramsey County, County, and then probably Hennepin um, County. sometimes Hennepin was there, yeah. and I saw FBI agents, yeah. so they were there. They yeah. have the yellow tape around it. They've already the broken down doors. They have warrants, but they don't use them. I don't know how they were so illegal, these right. search 
searches or raids, I mean, I thought you're supposed to go in with these search warrants and they had them, but people were on their on their stomachs, on the ground, sometimes naked because they were woken up to this gun, you know, pointed at them and the warrants on the table. Like how? And, and, this, and even furthermore, like a lot of people who were at the convergence space went home to fall asleep to be being woken up to the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, this one kid, five years old, who lives in the Food Not Bombs house, was at the convergence space, was at his home in the morning, and mm. the same thing is happening to the same people. Talk about targeting. So, um, you know, that, ha like, same deal. Break down the door, guns drawn, messed up the whole place, people being handcuffed, thrown on the ground. Um, one or two individuals arrested from the home um, and everyone else, <laughs> you know, shocked and traumatic experience. Um, and then, so we rallied around it because what else are you going to do besides say no and, and get as much support as possible? And we had a, a meeting, a community meeting in a, a really popular neighborhood park um, and had a lot of support, had, a lot, had the lawyers there. And as we were dispersing, um, another one of the welcoming committee members was picked up. And that's when it got for me to a new and level. And four had already been arrested mm -hmm. from the previous night at the mm -hmm. Convergence from Center? From the raids. From the raids. No one was arrested at the Convergence Okay, so space. that was from the raids yeah. and then one in the park. Okay. Yeah. So we're up to five. five yeah, five now. Um, and so I think it gets so murky. Yeah, like <laughs> all the details. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when, when Lutza was picked up at the park, that was a new level of because nowhere was safe anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't go home and I couldn't mm -hmm. stay on the street. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I'm not the only person who felt that way. And that was a clear tactic because the more that they could raid, like I worked with a video group called Eyewitness Video, which right. you've heard tons about by now because it's been getting huge news because it's journalists and legal observers who are getting targeted and arrested and raided and their house was raided and they were handcuffed and detained for some time and they went through all their stuff and the search warrant. These are people that really know the laws. Mm -hmm. They went to the door, it was the middle of the day, there was huge press there, corporate press, independent media and they said no you can't come in this is for the wrong side of the house it was uh -huh, a duplex right. and they busted in any way the other side and went into their house but um, you know I think with that kind of that really what it caused was an inability to do the work, what we came for. Right. So there wasn't a lot of journalists and cameras on the other raids. They couldn't go around the city and talk to people and do interviews. We couldn't do our work. We were immobilized mm -hmm. to prepare for the demonstrations, you know, against the Republican National Convention coming in and their spectacle mm -hmm. and what they've done in their eight years of, you know, office and all of these policies that we're really protesting. And you can't get the message out because the only message somehow now becomes the raids and the drama and how mm -hmm. dangerous are we and like these right. people and who are are they and why are they being raided as if there's any sense you can't even make sense of it it's, right. it's so irrational and you're in this like surreal like twilight zone world yeah. of like what's going on and that's kind of what happened as as more welcoming committee members began to get arrested um, those of us who were not being held really stepped up to the plate and and tried to I mean we were talking before about you know I wasn't arrested and how awkward that feels and how lucky I am really mm -hmm. um, but how powerful it felt for me to necessitate that that necessitated me like using my voice mm -hmm. and being out mm -hmm. there and we held a press conference which was pretty u different for the welcoming committee's media policy but um, you know like to not let the climate take over your actions mm -hmm. to not let the tactic of fear that is being perpetuated by you know not only in St. Paul but mm -hmm. throughout this entire country throughout mm -hmm. the world to not let it paralyze you mm -hmm. to really find what what message you need to bring out and say it mm -hmm. and so by talking to people talking to your neighbors mm -hmm. to not let that paralyze you. Yeah. We arrived at 12th and Cedar we were, uh, many people were engaged in a sit-in. I was standing in front of the march holding the banner along with another person. And at that point, uh, the police were trying very much to prevent us from speaking out. <clears throat> I was shot at close range with a rubber bullet. I'd like you to see what happened. Mm. And later, uh, later, I was arrested for unlawful assembly and taken to the jail. I think people have a right to speak out against the war in Iraq and demand peace, justice, and equality. I was glad to participate in the demonstration organized by the anti-war committee, and I commend them for organizing it. And before the march had even started, I was snatched and grabbed by about seven or eight riot police in park property, doing nothing but standing while doing independent media. Today, I have been told that I have a fracture in my arm, 
um, due to the position that they had me in as they drug me into a cop car to basically disappear me and my camera from the day's events. On Tuesday, I met with a group of friends of mine who were going to um, take part in what I understood to be a permitted assembly at Mears Park and all to be followed by what I understood to be a permitted uh, march. And as we started to head out of the park and down into the street in the march route, the permitted march route, um, I was assaulted by cops. Uh, I was never told that I was arrested. I was never told anything at all. I was grabbed by my shirt, taken by surprise, and then knocked unconscious by um, being shot by tasers. Hi, Rochester Indy TV. Uh, this is going fa ba by fast, the show. So we have to really focus here because we got to talk about the members of the RNC8 Welcoming Committee, but just lightly we have to touch on, I think it's the creepiest element of this whole thing, and it always is whenever there are infiltrators, mm, because it's yeah. such huge deception, and there is such um, you know, a focused intensity of the government to like, use these people to create things that didn't exist, to make up stories, to make up lies, to you know, violate all of our friendships and relationships, mm -hmm. and to make everybody sketched out and freaked out. So And get paid for it. And they get paid, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's the thing. That I so mean, dirty. It's dirty. It, it's a strange thing. And people do a lot of thing for, things for money. And like, I'm not here to say who's lying and who's not and all that sort of, I mean, the courts will decide that. But there's it, definitely an edge of, of just discomfort, obviously discomfort, and just like really the, the tactic at which people, uh, the extent to which people will go to really manipulate a group and, and, and you know, entrapment and, and, and leading people into things. And, you know, I worked with f four people who I now know to be f informants, paid informants over the last year. Did you ever and intuit, honestly? Some you did, some you didn't. How do you know? Well, <laughs> and that's a good question. And that's a question that I'm asking myself because I have a lot, like security culture is a word out there um, that people use to help create climates of trust so people can um, work together because you're working on things that a lot of folks find problems with. You know, dissent is a controversial issue in this country. And so um, there was definitely like a lot of intuitiveness towards the folks who we found out to be infiltrators. And so my takeaway message is definitely like trust your intuition and be confrontational with them. Like ask them, where are you from? And can I talk to your mom? Because you know, I would rather know, I would rather be uncomfortable in a meeting than have my mug shot uh, in the paper um, and be, and see the person who I didn't ask about their family history and just have a conversation because they're, we need to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that you shouldn't create a, a community and you shouldn't trust people, but that you really need to look out for yourself. And you, re and you also need to not talk about things that you're not comfortable talking about. We have to get to the RNC-8. I yeah. know it's it's hard. There's so many details to this, and so people have to get out there and find it other ways, because the media, that's a whole other topic we won't really have time to cover, because the right. RNC Welcoming Committee made a decision not to use the media and talk to the media, and now kind of thrown here because of the, these eight members um, being arrested with such trumped-up charges. Do you want to talk about what the charges are and well, what so we're doing? Well, so eight folks are being charged with um, felony, ro felony charges. Um, Oh, what is it? Conspiracy to riot with further enhancement um, of terrorism charges. So it's the first time the Minnesota Patriot Act of 2002 is being enacted in this way. Um, they're facing, I, I think the maximum is like seven years um, in, in prison. Um, and, and there are 18 felony cases. Um, you know, there's eight the, which are welcoming committee affiliated, and then there's all these other charges. Um, um, and and because 800 were arrested that week right a lot were given felony initially like hundreds and then right. they dropped them down to gross misdemeanors yeah. and about 18 felonies stuck from yeah. what you're saying mm -hmm. and then the eight from the welcoming committee yeah, and okay. three are federal three are federal felony charges so people are facing some pretty serious and stuff do you know what they're like do they have do you have any more details into like what they're saying they did because they didn't do anything they there was they didn't even ha walk into the street any of these people yeah, right none of them were on the streets in st paul because um, they were in jail. Um, so, you know, and I don't really n know the nitty gritties of the details of the case in particular, and, and we want to be a little protective about talking about it um, mm -hmm. just because it is an open case right now. Um, but they're facing legal fees of a quarter million dollars, so money is really tight. If anyone can donate, we have a website. Um, it's www. 
um, RNC8, the number 8.org. Mm -hmm. There's tons of information on that website. Um, we've been compiling media, and, and so there's two documents, maybe three now, but two, I think, one, um, the, um, what's it called, the affidavit that was served to, to warrant the search warrants is posted online. People can look at it and see what it looked like. The informants are, are not named, but are um, seen in the context of the affidavit. So we're trying to be really transparent about what the hell's going on mm -hmm. because people need to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Because in my opinion, this is a precedent. Um, it's not the first precedent, but it is a pretty strong precedent. Mm -hmm. And if you look at you know 1968 Chicago DNC, there are a lot of similarities going on here, um, mm -hmm. a lot. And and the, it's the politicalization of dissent. It's it's. A lot of it's people, organizers everywhere should be really paying attention to this. I thought it was profound, like during the unmasking of the welcoming committee, when you finally decided to right. like expose yourself to the media and have a you know press conference there at the convergence space. You said um, we are all the welcoming committee. You right. know, it's not just eight people that were the welcoming committee. So right. really, there's many more of us that should be on trial then and should face these right. charges. It's and we should, you know, we have to be in this together because you're saying it's a precedent. This is about all of our First mm -hmm. Amendment rights and any rights that we may have to continue. Yeah, and just to go back to the informant thing is, I mean, the Welcoming Committee is not an isolated group here. We had something called the St. Paul Principles, which worked with a lot of the different protest groups um, who were going to be at the RNC, um, a lot of um, peace groups, you know, WAM, Vets for Peace, um, other groups, and these infiltrators went with us as allies, went with us as Welcoming Committee members to coalition and build bridges with other peace groups. So. No one, I mean. So if the welcoming committee came to your town, yeah. your community centers are bugged. So be careful, you know, pay the attention. Tour, to we went on, on tour to a lot of places across the country, and that was one of the things that was cited by the St. Paul, or by the police chief um, as, an, as evidence. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that police chief, that piece of crap, Bob Fletcher, Bob Fletcher and uh, yeah. the mayor mm -hmm. and the whole lot of them, I mean, they're the real mayor criminals and the RNC, um, you know, the those Republicans and uh, the rest of them, they, you know, they're just a bunch of criminals and, you know, I wish the vision of shutting it down would have happened, but I think, right. you know, we exposed something else, like how, okay. how threatened they are of the voice of resistance right now and how, you know, th I think th they see how much power the people could have and they mm -hmm. will have to stop it before it gets even anywhere near what we could do to like really change the system and it has to be changed so we'll, right. it won't stop us right no, no, I know <laughs> we're energized I we're like be here today if it stopped me. pepper spray <laughs> makes you stronger i really think so <laughs> tear gas and pepper spray it burns a little and then you get stronger it doesn't kill you um so there's a lot more so people can check out the you know do your google searches get yeah. out there check out the rnc8.org rnc8.org if you want to hold a benefit in your area, yeah. We have benefits. We got to go. we close out. Thanks for watching NDTV. Thanks. Wow. Wow.